In this video, I'm going to show you guys exactly how I made these adorable wooden designer lampshelves using Dollar Tree materials. Hi everyone, my name is Miranda and I'm back with another DIY. So unlike anything else on my channel, this project has a little story with it. It's inspired by a company who reached out claiming they wanted to work together and host a giveaway for you guys. So I'll share the details on the story and how it unfolded in case you're interested. But basically everything they promised is not exactly what happened. But either way, I fell in love with one of their products, which was the lamp shelf. And as it happened, like the timing, Dollar Tree just had came out with an item that I'm now seeing everywhere that made doing this DIY possible. So I decided just to make my own and you can do. It's real furniture and it's so well built. I'm just, uh, I'm just so proud of it. I'm curious, I'd love to know your thoughts on which one you like the most, the sheer one or the one with the gems. For this project, I start with 13 canvases and I start by prepping the canvases for this project. And all I do is just cut into the fabric with a pair of scissors and then I rip the fabric off. And then I flip it over and start prying the staples off of the back. Now be careful here because this is exactly how I scratched my hand and that was not fun. <laughs> then um, I go over the wood a few times with um, some sanding paper and I repeat this 12 more times until I have them all prepped and ready to start building. Next, I use four cutting boards for the actual shelf part. Now, you can do this one of two ways. You can add the walls or the canvases. Um, you can add those on the outside of the shelves, which will make the shelves a little bit bigger. Or you can stack the walls on top of the cutting boards, which will actually take up a little bit of space on each side, making your shelves a little bit smaller. Now, if you want to do this project without using screws and you just want to use like wood glue, then I would definitely stack them so that way it's stronger. Now, I'm going to be using screws, so I add my walls to the outside of the boards. Now, you probably want to go ahead and get some clamps from Dollar Tree if you don't have any because y'all clamps really made this uh, DIY so much easier it was like having extra hands helping me <laughs> so I start by adding the glue on the canvases and clamping them to the side of the cutting boards and then I just drilled two pilot holes on each side followed by two screws on each side if you don't drill the pilot holes this wood will crack and by the way every time from here on out throughout the video that you hear me um, talk about drilling and screwing the screws inside of the shelf. I always drilled pilot holes first before the screws. Okay, so moving on. I repeat this so that I have a wall on each side of my cutting board. And then I add another cutting board creating a top and a bottom so that it looks like a cube. And I repeat everything one more time so that I have two cubes just like my first one. Now I add two more of my canvases, one on each side between the cubes that I just created so that I have an even space between each of my shelves. Now that's it just for the shelf part of this DIY, which I think is so quick and cute and easy. So if you just wanted to make a shelf, you could do this and you're done. If you're wondering why there is an odd number of canvases, well, this is why, rather than using a cutting board for my next row up, I'm going to be using a canvas in the center, and this is going to be used as a brace. Now, as you can see, when I lay my canvas on top of the cutting board, you can see the size difference. So to make them the same size, I'm going to use some Jenga blocks, those little wooden blocks or tumble tower game from Dollar Tree. I'm going to add those on each side of the canvas and you need to turn the Jenga blocks where it's the slender side facing up. And as it turns out, it's a perfect match with the cutting boards. So now this is going to take the place of the cutting board. Just like before, I'm going to add a wall on each side and then this center brace in the middle. Now you want to use a long screw for this part because you're going to have a screw going through 
um, the outside wall canvas, then through the Jenga block, and then through your center brace. By the way, this will be like your fifth row because we have, you know, four shelves and then we have this one. So this is like, you know, row number five. After I have this secured in place, then I go outside and I spray paint this white. And I really wish I would have waited a little bit to start painting, um, but I didn't. By the way, I used the primer for this because it's raw wood and it's like drinking the paint. <laughs> but um, I, I primed it with some spray paint and then um, I went over it with some white gloss. Now, when it dried, I brought it back in and here is where it starts getting really fun. So I used a hanging plant basket from the floral section of Dollar Tree. And the first thing I do here is remove the ring from the basket. I just take a pair of pliers and I snip, snip, snip all the way around um, toward the bottom near the ring and I pop the ring off. Now I place the basket on top of the center brace to see where the arms kind of line up on the brace the arms of the basket. So this is super important here. Make sure if you're gonna do this project um, this way that you keep your arms on the inside um, frame or the inside canvas, not the outside. This has to be all on the inside. So I make my marks with a pencil and then I drill a hole and then thread the arms through and then I do the other side. Now, I want this to fit really snug and I'll put on I'll put it on screen the size drill bit that I use so you'll know cuz you want you don't want your holes to be too big. I didn't even glue this or wasn't really any need to. So I repeat this like I said for the other side and here's the thing because these arms on the basket they don't line up even and across from each other you may have one side where you have two arms and then three arms on the other and that's okay now that was the case for this lamp the one that you're seeing on camera but the one off camera it had two arms on one side and two arms on the other i just want to let you know not to be alarmed if you're doing this and it's not looking exactly like mine is now you're gonna have to work this in and it's really easy to maneuver and get it to fit, but you may have to kind of tap the top of it kind of like a hammer. Um, you're not gonna have to put a lot of pressure or anything, but you are gonna have to work it in. And once that's in place, then you're just gonna go around the rest of your basket and snip the extra arms off. And then you'll be able to pick it up in the center, your entire shelf up. You could just pick it up in the center of your basket and see how secure it is. Now you'll need the S hook that came on the chains of this basket and you'll just bend the bottom of that S hook back and then take the chains off and slide the loop on the bottom of that S hook right through the outside circle ring of the basket and take some pliers and just bend it down. Now I know the angle of my camera here, um, I'm kind of in the way and I apologize about that. But all we're gonna do is just kind of bend the um, S hook down where it's you know, kind of going along with the circle in the center. And then we're gonna take some zip ties and zip tie that and secure it into place. Now what I'm using for my light bulb and, and that's what this S hook is for, is for holding my light bulb. I'm going to be using what's called a plug-in light socket. And I've shown these before on my channel and everybody loved them. So here they are again. And these are only like a dollar or two at any hardware store. And they plug right into any extension cord and boom, you have a lot. So I'll show you guys something else at the end of this video that you're going to like too. Also, I'm using some LED light bulbs that I got from Dollar General. And these do not get hot. Like you can touch them hours and hours after they've been plugged in. They will not get hot. So I screw my bulb in the socket and then test to see how it fits. And I add zip ties where I think I need them until I'm happy with how secure it feels. Now I have four more canvases left and these are for the uh, side walls and I just built up with them. Actually, I'd stapled two of them together just so I wouldn't have to use clamps and line them up twice and just kind of, you know, make it a little faster. <laughs> So all I do is repeat the same thing as before. I add screws on each side, including where the staples are. Then I get my full height, which is six canvases tall. And these are eight inches. So 
it's 48 inches. I'm going to actually measure that. I think it should be 48 inches tall. Okay, since the top two walls, they do not have a cutting board between them or a canvas between them like before. And I had ran out of the six by eight canvases. So I used um, a piece of wood from an eight by 10 canvas as a brace bar. Now you can use anything for a brace bar like a um, wooden ruler or the little paint paddles the little stirs that are free you can use those just anything to give a little bit of support and i cut these to fit and then drilled one on um one row and then one on the opposite side on the top row And you can see how well and sturdy this is. Now, this next step is optional. I added a thin layer of plastic to kind of tone down the harshness of the light. Now, I'm using a soft white light bulb, but it still seems to be pretty bright. And it must be because of my lampshades that I'm using. I don't know. But just to soften it down a little bit, I used two of these clear folders that come in a three pack in the office section of Dollar Tree. And they have a plastic cover on the ends where the fold is. And you can just slide those right off. I unfolded this long ways and used a clamp. And then I marked and cut it to fit. Now I used a strong clear adhesive and then I clamped it into place followed by a few staples. Now, if you're cool with the drying time, the clamp and the glue would have been fine. I added the staples for the sake of filming and moving a little bit faster. And here's the extra tip for you. It turns out, and here's the extra tip for you. If you do this project this way, um, you can cut these clear folders in half long ways and it fits the sides of this lamp. It fits it perfect. So even if you wanted to add um, plastic on the back, I didn't add any plastic on the back of mine because nobody's going to see it, not even me. <laughs> so if you want to do that, all you're going to need is a three pack anyway, because one folder will do both sides. So moving on, now it's time for the lamp shade. So for my first lamp, I'm going to be using gems and I purchased these from Amazon. I'll leave a link below. So I just glued two dowels together and these dowels are um, a little bit skinnier than the ones from Dollar Tree. These are the ones from Walmart, but the skewers from Dollar Tree, like the barbecue skewers, those are the same size. So those would work if you have some of those on hand. So I just wind some wire around the ends and this wire is from the hardware section of dollar tree and i just wrap it around and then i bring the wire um, in front and across my first jump ring so i just thread the jump ring through and then i just you know go over the jump ring with the wire and i wrap it twice once to hold it in place and the second time to lock it in place so you can see how this is working out and they will not slide or glide like you can put these in place exactly where you want them and if you do it this way your gems will not move so i do this like i said i didn't do anything to the back so i made one of these for the front and i made one for each side of my lamp to hang these towels i use a blade to slit a little hole in the plastic right below the top of the frame and I just fed a zip tie through that part and around the dowel. And I just got the zip ties, you know, tight as I could. And I put one on each side of the side frames and on the front one, because it's so much heavier, I put one in the center and one on each side. And later, like much later on, I ended up gluing two rows of acrylic gems around the top to kind of disguise that wire a little bit i really wanted that gold to pop because i wanted a little contrast in there but i could not take looking at those wires anymore so that's just two rows of acrylic gems glued with hot glue and some clear adhesive so for my other lampshade, I used three rolls of the sheer fabric that you can find in the wedding section of Dollar Tree. Now you can use more. In fact, I recommend four rolls because three, it was pretty hard to get it to stretch um, out three rolls and look right. And what you want to do is just start out by unrolling the entire roll of fabric. And when you get to the end, just double the fabric over and then glue the fold to the bottom of the frame. And you'll just start wrapping this around and around. Now you'll go 
two wraps so you'll go you're starting at the bottom you'll go up down and then again up down giving yourself four layers in each section until you work your way around now you're going to get through this really quick this this part takes no time the only tips i have for you is just to make sure you keep your fold the whole time and to add a little bit of hot glue just a little dab here and there where you think you need it when and where you think you need it and you're going to need it mainly just on the sides and where you start and end now, once I made my way around, I decided to add a strand of gems that one of my subscribers and family members here on YouTube, Pam Bell, sent me. So thank you so much, Pam. I love this strand of gems. These are so unique and I love this look. I wanted to add something, but I didn't want it to be too much. Just gives it that nice little touch of elegance there and i just kind of draped them on each side and i stapled the strand in place at the top of the frame and um the other thing let's see i did oh yeah i went back on both of my lamps and i added some chandelier gems around the plant basket on the inside and this then to give that some length, I used some wire from the hardware section and I made um, each of them hang a little bit lower. Now, some of you may already know this because I've shown this before on my channel, but it's been a while. So you can buy an on and off switch from somewhere like Lowe's or Home Depot. And they're, you know, like, I don't know, a couple of bucks maybe. So all you do is plug your extension cord into your on off power switch and now you can turn your lamp on and off without having to plug and unplug it so you literally have a switch you can turn your lamp on and off i hope you guys enjoyed it let me know if you decide to recreate it and send me some pictures i would love to see some of your creations of this diy i cannot believe how beautiful this turned out it's like real furniture made with dollar tree materials like this is real wood i'm in love with these lamps anyway let me know which one is your favorite in the comment section below thank you so much for watching i love you guys and i'll see you again in another dollar tree diy